trademark move. My trademark move. Hey. I'm Dave. I'm Sean. This is Barstools. And Bantock. The complete maritime music bucket list. And I have to say, this is... So this thing started, what, in March? No, nope. this is the second, or sorry. Yeah, the whole shutdown started March. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. March. The yeah. day before St. Patrick's Day, everything kind of started. Yeah. Um, this is only the second time since March 16th that I haven't practiced my drums. So I'm feeling pretty good. I came home. I was tired as crap. I took a nap, slept a little like a bag of crap. Hey, everybody has a bad day. I have fewer than most or fewer than many or whatever you want to put it. So I'm feeling pretty chipper right now. <laughs> and uh, we were just on the channel uh, a couple seconds ago before we went on this live hit. So I'm, uh, I'm excited about this. Um, this is what you would call the, the, the next generation of guys, guys and gals that are out there doing it. And it's, uh, he's got some good energy and you're going to like this. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I ended up meeting his brother uh, probably five, six months ago, and he was in town. There, He was in Port Hastings or somewhere, and he said they were in town doing a gig at Augustus, I want to say, and they were called Andre Pettipa and the Giants. I said, what a cool name, because that reminds me of Andre the Giant and Big Stephen Pettipa from Atlanta Grand Prix Wrestling. That's how old I am. And he goes, yeah, that's exactly it, man. That's where we get the name. And it was, like, really excited. Anyhow, uh, so Andre Pettipa is a real guy, not and he actually is the nephew of Stephen Pettipa. Just want a little history for you. And they're gonna do some. Well, actually, he's gonna do some songs. We have Andre with him tonight. But there's some video stuff that we've already put on our site for these guys. I'm excited for you folks to meet them. And you know what? It's something relatively new for Sean and I. It's a new genre that we're not really used to, not you know, not really knowledgeable. About. So we're just gonna be schooled by Andre Pettipa, and we're gonna see him in about one, two, three, four, five. Six seconds. There he is. What's happening, hey. fellas? How you hey, doing, what? brother? We're we're here. We're ready for a good evening. All right. So yeah, I was just in a little preamble there. I was just saying, gosh, it's like Sean and I don't know enough about the style of music that you're doing right now. I've heard a couple of tunes. I really really like them. Uh, so, yeah, I describe it as um, southern rock meets '90s pop rock. Okay. So that's kind of uh, like I'm a big fan of bands like Zeppelin, Skinnerd, but then I'm a big fan of bands like The Gin Blossoms, Matchbox 20, uh, Guns N' Roses, Foo Fighters. So it's kind of a mix of all that into one. Cool. So like it can either be really tame or more, more than likely a big lion coming at you, ready to <laughs> rip someone's head off. Right on. Yeah, um, so... I'm glad you mentioned Gin Blossoms and, and Matchbox 20 because, uh, to be honest with you, the 90s for me were – there wasn't a lot I personally um, – I, I won't say like, but identified with. I'm like a, an 80s hair metal guy, and then some yeah. stuff in 2000s is pretty cool. Uh, but those are two bands that great melody, great hooks, popish kind of background that just, you know, are, are so memorable from the 90s. No, definitely. Like, that's the kind of thing that I like. I like to establish a hook – I'm all about the hook because for myself, if I'm writing a song, I want it to be something that I'd like. So if right. I write a song and I'm like not happy with it, I'll just ditch it. Because if, if I'm not going to like it, who else is going to like it? It's like, well, I, we, we talk about that a lot too. I mean, you're always going to be your own worst critic. Yeah, but, definitely. But you don't know. Well, I don't know. I guess, you know, like what the mainstream is listening to right now. I don't know. I mean, Sean and I know our own music to sound that we like. There's a lot of stuff yeah. that I like on the radio now. But your tune, I'm telling you, it really hit me. It's like, wow, this is well written. This has got a good hook. It's like, I, it was memorable, like you said. So that's really yeah. cool. That's that's kind of the thing. It's just create your hook. And I, like when I'm writing, it usually comes from a one-liner I think of, and then I write it in my phone notes. And when I think of the guitar riff, I'll come back and search to it. I'm like, I already have a song. So like the, the writing, the lyric parts come pretty quick to me. And I'm kind of a person that if I want to write something, I'm going to spend however long it takes. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to finish it now. Right on. Uh, yeah, I got that kind of uh, killer instinct to finish something right away. What, uh, what part of the world are you from, Andre? Um, I'm from Antigonish County. So I grew up on a dirt road that had probably <laughs> 25 people there. Um, I'm living in Cape Breton right now. I bought a house here three years ago. So uh, okay. 
not too far from where I grew up, about 25 minutes. So this is home now. And like, this is a beautiful part of the world. I mean, yeah. the causeway is going to open up soon enough and I'm going to be cursing every day trying to get back and forth. But that's, uh, that's the kind of things you have to deal with to look at the water every day, I guess. Nice. Well, that's good though. That's, that's, that could be your Would you be in or come again? I said, would you be in and around the Port Hawkesbury area? Yeah, I'm like five minutes from Port Hawkesbury. So I'm in uh, Port Hastings. Yep. So just right after the rotary, um, I'm like maybe 15 seconds past there. Okay. So I, I consider myself a dual citizen. I'm a mainland, <laughs> mainlander and honorary Cape Bretoner. <laughs> yeah. You don't, to, you don't have to pay the toll anymore, so that's a good thing. <laughs> no, but if they – put the toll booth back in maybe build a bridge i think it would make a lot of people happier they had that yeah. little john cabot trail now in the key Bristol liberation army now that would have been <laughs> <laughs> that's uh the cabot trail is freaking beautiful i haven't done it this year but i try to go every usually every fall when the fall's are best yeah oh yeah. it's beautiful man so tell me how you get started in music so you're you're your late 20s now yeah, I'm, I'm 28 right now. Um, I started playing music when I was 12. With um, It was our grade 8 graduation. And a couple of my best buddies, my, uh, my guitar player at the time, he picked up the guitar the summer before. And I, I didn't even play guitar then. So I just sung. And our first show, um, we covered, I believe in a thing called Love by the Darkness, Are You Gonna Be My Girl by Jet, and uh, Shook Me All Night Long by ACDC. <laughs> Cool. I was about five feet tall and I had hair down to here and throughout high school I played in like Guns N' Roses cover band uh we did um we wrote all our own stuff too it was the same band and then throughout the years I just evolved and kept growing musically and I've been playing with my brother for the last 10 years he plays bass in the band yep so we've been just we've been hacking at it in dungy bars and private parties and all that for a long time and uh, this year we were supposed to release our sophomore album. We have a couple big secrets that we're not allowed to say right now, but we were set for uh, set for a good summer. I was supposed to be doing cross Canada rip. Um, we had uh, Japan in October Ugh. and uh, now like we've been talking with um, a festival in India. They want us there in February, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So it's just we're trying to make the best of what, the world is throwing at us right now like right. brings brings us to today where we've been working on a self-released ep that we're just like okay we're not going to release our sophomore album because we want to tour it we take a lot of pride in our live show which goes coincides with the album we find we finally captured our live sound on the album so we want to do it right and not just release it to release it so that's why we did uh the COVID cuts EP. It's just a reimagining of old songs that we've released and kind of show where we started and kind of see where yeah, it yeah. is now. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Very good. So, so that's when, yeah, when we're done here, like I want to be able to do uh, show folks where they can get access to this stuff too. Right. Cause I mean, we yeah, yeah. What, you're, what you're doing, right. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. So cool. our website, yeah. uh, Andre Pettipon, the giants.com, our Instagram, I'm active daily on that. So that'd be at AP and the giants, same as Twitter. And Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash Andre Pettipa and the Giants. Perfect. So, yeah, we'll be sharing it everywhere. And then it's going to be available on all the streaming services next Friday, too. Awesome. So, yeah. should you get the bus out of tune here? Yeah. yeah. I was just going to say, like, let's do that. I'd like to hear Sweet. what you guys are doing. And our, our faithful audience here at Barstools of Band Talk mm-hmm. want to know about Andre and Giant and the Pettipa. So, here's Andre Pettipa. All right, this one's called Homesick. This is going to be uh, the second single off the album when we release it. Go something like this. Look it. Sorry in advance For all the mornings You roll over and I'm not there Sorry in advance For all the dates I miss Good night kiss The love that seems distant I feel a bit homesick Give me something To get rid of it And I want it all I feel a bit tired And I 
Tongue-tied words that worry you Take a chance And gamble Oh no, babe I feel a bit homesick Give me something To get rid of it And I want it all I feel a bit now I really like myself yeah, yeah. Is this what I want? When the lights fade And you're still by my side When I drift away Into the night Thank you in advance Thick and thin. Thank you in advance. Yeah. I feel a bit homesick. Give me something to give. You're the first time, first first person we've had on this come on that's actually played a tune, and I'm actually, it was great, and I'm uh, the the sound was was amazing. Um, Thanks, man. Who? Um, so I'm listening oh. to your there. Um, who who are some comparables that people have told you you sound like? Because I I have one in my head, but give me. A um, I've I've got some 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 comparisons to Shannon Hoon, which is my favorite singer, uh, Blind yeah. Melon. Yeah. Um, that's that's basically the one that people really uh, catch off the top, and I'm a big fan of the Black Crows, so that kind of southern sound. Yeah. But then, like, I'm also a huge fan of the Trues. Been growing up listening yeah. to them. Those are kind of the uh, inspiration for that. So it's um, like we were ahead of time because those are the three in my head that I was hearing yeah. when you. Were Honestly, God, <laughs> I'm thinking really? to myself, so I can sort it, but you know what? It's terribly original, man. Like I said. It's like I can hear. I know what Sean's saying. Like, there's remnants of this and this. You can, you can tell who your influences are. Yeah. But terribly, terribly original song. Awesome. Thanks really good lot, job, man. man. Really, and I mean it. You know, I don't really appreciate that. Normally, like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's yeah. Cool that they're there, but I mean, I'll be honest. With you, I play drums, and and somebody says, "Where'd you get that?" I can tell them what album because I'm I'm a I'm the, I should be handing out royalty checks to players all over the place because I don't do any of my own stuff, right? Oh, man. Well, that's how you, that's how you get your influences. It's like, it's like, okay, well, I heard it from this song. That's how a lot of songs start. It's like, well, yeah. I want to write a song like that friggin' song. Um, I'll just steal a little part and make it my own. So have, have, you, um, have you had any formal vocal training? No. Ah. Uh, no, I, you know what? I'm, like, I'm a kid that sung in my basement five hours a day and screech notes until I could hit them and basically just push my throat to, uh, to the extent. But I found over the last year, um, I took 2019 as a sober year for myself, gave up drinking <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just too. really, really focused in on, uh, just learning the listen better. There's a lot of people, they don't listen to when they're playing and it's like, can you not hear that you're flat? Like, okay, just listen harder. And that's, that's a big problem. Everybody's just not listening back to their self. And I find over the last year that I've really, really helped uh, my vocals, just listening more, listening back, recording. Like I record at yeah. home every day. Yeah. So I'm, I'm able to pick out where I'm missing 
and work on that. Now, Andre, you said you were playing some dungy bars and some parties. Now, and I'm curious because I mean we've talked a lot about on this show how mm. great how great the scene was, what yeah. kind of happened, how shitty it is, and how can we fix it? That's kind of what we do. So, but I mean for your genre of music, which again is super cool, like it really Thanks, is. You, you can play that anywhere. But I'm just curious where you are playing it. Um, so like we've we've toured across Canada. I've um, showcased in Sweden. But, uh, like, honestly, we were supposed to be playing with Buck Cherry last week at the Marquee. That was going to be our big Halifax show with our album release and all that stuff. But, like, we've been, uh, over the years, we've played the Carlton, the Seahorse, Sniggly yep. Wigglies. Uh, I played the Argyle when it was a thing. Um, basically, every nook and cranny in Nova Scotia, um, a lot in Alberta. Played a couple of places in Ontario. We played the Horseshoe. We played... Um, what was that name of that bar? What about all the bicycles and stuff outside? Bovine Sex Club. That was a really fun night. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't even believe somebody that uh, that's a wicked place, man. Man, yeah, we showcased there for Canadian Music Week last year and it was amazing. Like it was a Wednesday night and the bar was packed. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to Ontario, Toronto. Actually, that night I had to uh, kick a guy in the street. Yeah. So he he was mouthing off to this couple. And they were a younger couple, probably 19 or 20. And he had a wine bottle. He threw it at them. And I was like, dude, you got to back off. Like, what are you doing right now? He's just an idiot. And then my drummer and our guitar player were across the street. And I seen him mouthing off to them. I was like, okay, if this guy is going to talk to them, I'm just going to lose my cool. So he threw, uh, or he went and pushed my drummer. So I came flying across the street with a flying kick. <laughs> and that was right after we played the show. I was like, all right. Well, I think I'm a little bit fired up. Let's get back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that's rock and roll, baby. That's rock and roll. That's yeah. what it all it is. That's it, man. So that's you're from uh, Cape Britain. That's what you do. It's a hug and slug, brother. That's what you do. <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> well, man, I'm, I'm I'm really impressed with like what you've accomplished so far in your and your. This is your main gig. Do you have a day job as well or no? I'm a sheet metal worker as well. Um, I've been doing that for almost eleven years. But uh, yeah, I was supposed to be full-time musician this summer and uh, everything kind of changed with COVID. Mm. So we're just yeah. trying to adapt. Yeah. One of the things that we, it's, it's so two of the things are the recurring theme, either you're a full-time original musician or yeah. you kind of, okay, you know what, I'm going to do the cover circuit. Um, but regardless of what you're doing, um, you know, unfortunately our industry is the one that it's uh, somebody coined the phrase. I keep saying it. First to get frigged, the last to get fixed, and it's it. That's it, to me, man. Annoying. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we need more of a filter in the venues and, like, see the bands that are putting the work in and actually, you know what I mean. They actually sound good. Yep. Don't just like a lot of people buy Spotify buys and they buy YouTube views. So like some people can get tricked by that, but if you have a good live video, I think that should be most importantly if you're. If you're a venue, uh, if you're a booker or whatever, just make sure they send you a live video. Make sure that we have more of a filter so that not just every average Joe is playing the venues and clogging right. up the scene. You know what I mean? Absolutely. More quality than quantity kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, good point. Because I think the big fear is that um, now things certainly in the – I mean, I, I don't know if you know Michael Lloyd. He's from Sydney Mines. And um, Michael's – familiar. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a country guy. Mm -hmm. And um, – you're gone, Sean. Oh. He's all the way gone. Okay. Michael Lloyd took it from him. Michael Lloyd, we, we had him on the show uh, last week. Uh, yeah, he plays, okay. He plays with Sean sometimes in the band called The Frequency. So Sean plays in The Frequency. Yes, I know. Yeah, okay. I know who they are. So that's Kyle and Ryan Boudreaux. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kyle's amazing. I don't oh, know yeah. Ryan as well, but I've met Kyle uh, a few times. I'm going to just pause for a second, see if I can't get him back here. Just give yeah, me man. one quick second here. Hell NDA. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we we lost Sean, but we found him again. I think he had to go poop, but he's all right now. Uh, happens happens to the best of us. Well, <laughs> the point is, uh, work versus play. That was a work thing. That was anyway. I get cut off. I'm on my iPhone, so I apologize. My question was, yeah, uh, just with this whole COVID thing. So I was talking about my buddy Michael Lloyd. So some of the musicians are concerned that maybe the bars are going to bring them back, but at a reduced rate and the reason that you know they're gonna not necessarily cry poor but just kind of like ah oh, well you know what there's 
some guy with, you know, a guitar and he can play three chords. We'll get him for a hundred <laughs> and it charges 400. Um, what are your thoughts there? Cause I think that's a real thing for a lot of guys in our industry. That is such a real thing. And that's why, like I said, like we need a filter, a better filter for the buyers. Um, cause people, they hear someone and they're not the quality that should be there. And it's just like, why do you think there aren't huge crowds out? I mean, if you got your own following, you're going to have your crowds there. And, but on a, like an average night, get better filter and kind of weed out who's got it and who doesn't. And I think this um, pandemic actually helped a lot of that with people doing their live streams and kind of putting yourself here. This is me. This is what I got. And you can see who actually cares about it and who's just there as a hobbyist. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with the hobbyist, nothing wrong at all. But it means no, definitely not. It, it, it can't you know, plug up the system for folks who do it for a living. You know, they, yeah, for sure, man. Well, in the, um, you know, the example of that, I was out to a bar here in Halifax uh, a year or so ago. There's a guy that I know who I never knew him as a musician. And I went up and I said, I didn't know you played. And he goes, well, I really didn't. My buddies and I had a band in university and everybody said we should be in a band and go play. So we're doing it. And I'm just going, shit, that's the thing that I'm talking about. Because yes. they're, they're kind of out there taking a spot. And God love them, they're doing it. But it's like they could care less if they're there or not. It's just shits and giggles where – yeah. My buddy paying rent with that stuff, and it's kind of a little bit annoying to me. A hundred percent, and you see that so so often. Like I, I don't mean to badmouth anybody, but I mean like there's got to be a better filter, and I think that's how our scene will be able to thrive with just people caring more. Yep, exactly. exactly. Your product should be the number one thing you're worried about. Mm -hmm. Like bar owners should want to look at that. It's not like oh I got a, this guy for a hundred dollars. We'll pay the guy that's worth six, and you'll get more people in. It almost has to be a bar owner has to, it's, it sounds kind of weird. And I know this has gone on for the last couple of years when I was playing uh, on a pretty regular basis too. They were kind of, before they book us, they looked at, to see the size of our Facebook group. You know what I mean? They want to see how many people can I expect you to bring in on your own? I'm yeah. not going to do any promotion. I'm not going to pay anything. There's no radio spots anymore. There's just no, no one reads the newspaper. So yeah. you got to bring your own people in. And then that's how you're going to get paid. And that's kind of odd too, right? I don't like that either. Yeah. It should be a team effort. If like I work with a lot of venues and they say, let's split on the uh, Facebook paid promotion. Yep. You put in as much work as I'm going to put in and we can make this show better. Right and I find a lot of, a lot of venues are up for that. If you're up for the task of promoting, they should be up for the same amount. And like, it's a, it's a team thing. It's like sure. you want people in your bar, you want them buying drinks. You should promote as much as myself. Sure. Yeah, virtually, and it, it, you know, and it, again, you're right. I mean, and and the bar owners and the musicians have to take equal, I guess, ownership of the situation. But it's like when you do a wedding, you know, they pay for the venue, they pay for the limo, they pay for the church, they pay for the catering, this, that, that, the photographer. And then it's like, oh, I get two hundred bucks. You're a band. You want to play my wedding? It's like, no. Yeah, no. exactly, man. You know what I mean, and, and one, I don't want to play a wedding ever. <laughs> with drums and say no, and eventually. You know, the, the ship will write itself, right? No, one hundred percent, man. That, Listen, uh, you get your guitar back on there again. Let's you get, let's hear another tune. Fuck it, I love sounds it. Sounds good to me. All right, I'm really excited. I'm, I love this stuff. Man. Andre Pettibon, wow. the Giants. Might play a tune called the Swedish Motel. All right, let's see how she goes. We got the desire, we got the need, plenty of open road and abundance. It's not that we're afraid of the future, it's returning to where we've already been. Don't ask, won't tell, another rugged night. Don't ask, won't tell, not the wasted line. Don't ask, won't tell, not the night in at the Swedish Motel. To the eyes and wise, it may seem that we're running fool's errands to catch our dreams. Those flesh colored curtains really make ends meet. So we hop in the Volvo, 
to make last Friday repeat. Don't ask, won't tell. Another rugged night. Don't ask, won't tell. Another wasted life. Don't ask, won't tell. Another night in paradise. <laughs> At the Swedish Motel. At the Swedish Motel, day six drinks and broken bottles. Feel your heart's need. It's your Bible, the church of rock and roll. It's full of sinners. We're in session now. They're trying to begin. All right. Don't ask, won't tell. I'm never gonna tell. Don't ask, won't tell. You're talking about the Swedish motel? <laughs> Don't ask, won't tell. I know somewhere we can go. All right. Don't ask, won't. Oh, I need the end of the night. Don't ask, won't tell. Till you bring me back to life. Don't ask. Won't tell another rugged night. Don't ask, won't tell another wasted life. Don't ask, <laughs> won't tell another night in paradise. At the Swedish motel. This is my ringtone. <laughs> Good job, man. That's, <laughs> awesome. that's awesome. Really nice job, Andre. Really nice Thanks, job. Thanks, man. That's, uh, that's, we won the Q104 2017 Homegrown Challenge. And that song was uh, one of the songs we recorded for our industry demo. So uh, it was one of four songs. We went to Coda Pop. Um, we had like $5,000 in recording. So we released that song as a single. And strangely enough, we were about to release it in July of 2017 and, or 2018, 2017 or 2018. And I got an email from a festival in um, Sweden looking to uh, get us for a festival called Live at Heart. It's a showcase conference festival. And I was like, we're releasing a song called the Swedish Motel. <laughs> this is just too strange. So I took it as an omen and we went and um, finished recording the music video there. So that was uh that song's kind of been one that sticks with us. That's awesome. So you mentioned Coda Pop. I, I actually spent not last New Year's, but the New Year's Eve before Coda Pop. A beautiful um, spot. And he um he had about two hundred people in the in the top part of the house he was doing tours and uh he had a band called the Gold Blooms, a fabulous Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, have you seen those guys before? Yeah, that uh Sam Najar is a good buddy of mine. He plays uh, guitar in the band. Yeah, yeah. So Sam, uh, actually, Sam plays with my band every now and again, and him and oh, uh, sweet. yeah, him and Kyle Boudreau do a little. Um, Kyle's from Aerostat. He uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he um, they do the, the shoe shop every Wednesday night. But back to my point. Uh, awesome studio. I mean, that guy. Um, I had an yeah. opportunity to talk to him for about a half hour. He's doing it for the love of love of music, man, for sure. That's it, man. He's uh, like it's. Not he, I think he's like a lawyer or something. Not a lawyer, yeah. maybe. He's got he's got some kind of uh, thing that he can put his money towards making the studio the right way. Right and on, yeah. anytime I've hung out with Doug, he's just the hostess with the mostest. Make <laughs> sure that make sure that you're having a great time. He's one of the best guys I know. Yeah, Andre, it sounds sure. like you're you're living the life, brother. It sounds like you're doing everything friggin' right, you know. And I I think that's impressive. I do for for you know like just. Your music is a throwback. It's 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 perfect. Like I said, what you're doing right now is is kind of what I, I wish everyone had the same kind of mentality. You know, what I mean, just forge Thanks ahead, lot, forge ahead, forge ahead. But right. That's it. Like I'm kind of the mentality. It's invest in yourself or who else is going to do it. So right like, I literally before our sophomore album, I took out a twenty five thousand dollar line of credit to help pay for our album. So I'm up for uh, five hundred dollars in interest a month. So that. We, <laughs> Uh, so that we could go record our album and uh like i was saying some good things came from it that we're not allowed to talk about but yep, yep. you gotta take the chance and a lot of people don't do that they cheap out like 
in my room here, my music room, I've got like $20,000 worth of equipment just so that I can learn more things. Went out last year and spent uh, like $2,000 on a piano. So I'm like, if I don't buy a good one, I'm not going to learn how to play it. Uh, it's kind of like kick yourself in the ass. Like, well, buy, buy quality and learn how to do it. We had a, an interview, and I don't know how much time you spent on, the, on this show so far, but it's, it's, your story sounds eerily familiar from 50 years before when a young Bruce Wheaton had the same kind of mentality, you know what I mean? And when he started with his band, opportunities were there to play cover tunes and the money was there. We said, no, he's true to form, only wanted to play his own songs. You know, they did this big showcase in, in Ontario and Toronto at the time. They had, you know, all these cover bands were there and they did 14 of their own songs and they kept mm -hmm. the dance floor going. So it's just belief, you know, it's pretty it's what belief. comes Yeah, hundred percent, man. If you're up there and you're confident, like mm -hmm. myself, it's all about confidence and making connection with your audience yeah like i'm out there and i'm yelling at people it's like let's do this we got throw your phone away for a little bit let's just live in the moment and have fun yeah and we all uh, bought wireless packs this year too so we're living a little bit more in the fun now and nothing to trip over on stage all that is out of the way right now we have no stages to play <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bunch. isn't yeah. that the way it always goes amen brother you know, around though I, uh, I i i am a big believer we went out last friday night and walked downtown yep. uh, there was not the full-on party going on but there was an energy that hasn't been around in a couple months so it was good to see and i, I got my fingers crossed i'm an optimist there yeah. me too man that's amazing it's like um Truro, have you heard of belly up yep so, yep right there. so they're building uh outside stage right now Ah, there's a picture of that being on our, on our yeah. site, actually. Yeah. yeah, man. So I'm good friends with Derek, the owner. Okay. He actually, uh, he reached out to me the other day. So we may or not be playing there uh, soon. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so we're, I'm looking forward to that when uh, whenever that is. But like more venues kind of have to adapt to that, to stay open, to stay relevant, to stay, keep your head afloat during this because there's so many places that are going to shut. You nailed us something earlier, and it's kind of funny. We talk about necessity being the mother of invention. Now, no one friggin' knew this COVID-19. Who ever thought a global pandemic would ever hit us? You know, be, but at the end of the day, we're going to have to adapt and change. Now, do you think live stream may be the new norm? Do you think? I mean, obviously, I was, I mean, you got to get in and interact with your audience for sure. Yeah. Uh, but do you think that might be something that may be the new normal? I think it'll be definitely looked upon for the next at least year and a half. Because, I mean, you're not going to be able to do the big festivals. I just don't uh, – I, I hope they get better and better, keep growing. There's more opportunity for people that would never be heard to be showcased on a bigger platform. Say if you have a big headlining band and then you're before them, boom, your audience is all over the world without you having to leave your house. Right. So I think if you do it right, you have the ability to grow quicker than you ever would. Yeah, the, the only part that it's locking is that immediate gratification when you're when you're done because you get. That's it, <laughs> man. It's that's the one of the weirdest things. It is without getting the high five, without getting the pat in the back. It's it's little. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, watch. Uh, you you mentioned you were a wrestling fan, so watch WWE right now. They're in there doing oh, their shit. No, no dance. And a part of me is um, actually. I, I, I get it, and I, I, I give the prompts for it. I mean, to go out there and, and, and do your thing. Like, you know, you're going off the top rope in front of 50,000 people. It's amazing when there's nobody there. Um, but even that gets – the first couple of weeks I watched it, that's cool. And now I'm kind of like, I'm over it. I want to see, you know, that guy from Texas lifting his shirt up. And, that's you know, it, man. <laughs> yeah, the, the crowd is as part of the show as the entertainers. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. You're absolutely like, that's I, – I wanted to talk about a, a show – so like the morning after, have all your friends, um, it's kind of like uh, the morning report, I guess you'd call it. Have all your friends that were at the show, see what these, they seen throughout the night. What did the bartender see? Have everybody come together and then boom, there's your TV show. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. What I mean? Like for a band, we only see a couple drunk people throughout it falling or we see the person that's giving her in the front row. We see sweat dripping off us, but we don't see the side stories that are going on. And you know, a million side stories hustles are going on at a bar through the show yeah. so. well it's a good point and conversely the audience doesn't know what's going on on stage because some of that mm -hmm. some of the banter that's people never get to see besides whoever's up on the stage right yeah exactly man so, so I think, that's really cool you say that because that's kind of what our, our plan was with this show 
like yeah. we kind of wanted to give the full perspective and, we, and we're we're getting there we've had agents we've had club owners we've had bar staff we've had a lot of musicians mm -hmm. uh we you know we've had folks that are well russ brennan from music stop <laughs> the other day i mean there's we're trying to cover all, the all-encompassing industry we're trying to dabble off into a little bit into the film industry too because it's the same kind of thing right the little yeah it's hand in but, hand but i like your idea that's kind of cool like i said you know how could you you know uh catalog the whole night right that's neat. right yeah like the morning after or something the morning report i know uh, the eric had a album called the morning report and it's just kind of about what they did after the show right and it's like boys tell me the morning report how'd the night go so like i think uh i think more people be interested about that thing and it's great what you guys are doing like you're getting i think it's bringing everybody a little bit closer together mm. to see everyone's opinions so if you have that all thrown out there, we can kind of understand each other a little better. Oh man, and yeah. I think I think the pandemic is actually doing that. It's helping people kind of open their eyes yeah. a little bit better and kind of understand. I mean, yeah. you're still gonna have your people that are assholes no matter what. Yep. But you can filter them out a lot easier with the block button. <laughs> yeah. Or 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 they want or they end up with their own successful Facebook slash YouTube show, and that that kind of works out too. <laughs> <laughs> or um. You guys have each other's phone numbers, right? I can grab it from Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, do me a favor, Andre. Um, yeah. Get to give me your phone number because the person that we had talked about before we recorded that we can't talk about, I've actually got a very funny story that I remember that I want to relate to you, and I'll text it to you. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Yeah. It's uh, and it and involves uh, it involves somebody from the NHL and somebody from the music business in the city of Toronto, <laughs> and it'll be kind of funny. So yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to hear now. Yeah. I'm like waiting on the edge of my seat. Yeah, yeah. No okay. wrestle. No. <laughs> we, we, we got a couple minutes left in now before we're done. Now, Andre, Listen, I just want to thank you so much for being on here because this is you're the first guy who's performed live for us. And I'm telling you right now, you've raised the bar pretty high. So uh, I appreciate that, man. People want to get on the bar so and band talk show. They better break up their freaking guitars. Just saying. Yeah, um, that's that's it. It's part of entertainment. You're you got to give the whole package. You know, you're just right. just come so, out. Balls, balls blazing. <laughs> right on, balls. Who's it? Guys in your band. Tell me who's in your band. So I've got my brother, Travis Pettypaw. He's yep. a bassist. Um, my guitar player is John McDonald. He's from uh, just, just outside of Antigonish. My drummer is Marcus Kosh. He's from Trenton. And our side man, uh, he comes in on the bigger shows. Lee Fleming Smith would be our organist. <laughs> so I play with Lee. Yeah, the lethal weapon. So he's yeah. actually, uh, he did the 80s cover that we're releasing next week with Ashley McIsaac too. So uh, yeah, he's uh, probably one of the best people <laughs> in the well, world. We had, we had somebody challenge us to that three shot challenge there. So Dave and I did the other night. Yeah. And I, I was driving home from work and it was Leafy because I just want you to know I've curbed my during the week drinking, but you bastard, I went to the wall for you last night and I met him. <laughs> is such a super, super, super dude, right? He's the best human, man. Like anybody that's just he's all on, always on the right level, you know what I mean? Even if even if shit's going sour, he's just calm, cool, and collected and he always gets the call back because he's rehearsed, he's just Boom, tunnel vision. I got yeah. this. It's so funny well, because Sean uh, was telling me about this Leaf Fleming Smith. We we're going to have the show. I was like, okay, I don't really know anything about him. But he said, he's really an old soul. Oh my yeah. God. He's it, just like, what a musicologist. You know, it was an amazing experience to have him on the show. Actually, I actually just put his, his uh, video up on YouTube today. Yeah, I just seen you uh, post the link before I came on the show. Ah, so okay. I'm going to check it out after this. <laughs> right on. Yeah. yeah um, actually, him and myself and Ryan Boudreau. So I play with Kyle and Ryan Boudreau. And okay, you're cool. asking, do you and your brother fight as much as those two do? But that's maybe for another show. Um, um, yeah, we, we don't even fight, really. Oh, really? Well, you should yeah. come, and do a seminar. come and do a seminar for the Boudreau brothers, please. <laughs> <laughs> Are they that bad? Well, they're, they're French Acadian, so they start arguing in French, too, which is kind of <laughs> They're great talented guys. But uh, Booty, uh, Leaf, and I are putting a little side hustle together if it ever comes together. Um, Leaf has this uh, kind of like a progressive Boston-y sort of thing that he wants to do. Sick. Uh, so, yeah, he can pull it off for sure. Oh, man. Yeah, he can do anything he puts his mind to, really. Guy's a yeah. friggin' genius. Yeah, that he is. Well, listen, I, I just, I'm so happy you came on the show. Like I said, Thanks for having me, man. 
listen, it's been experience for sure. I mean, I love, love, love the tunes, and I'm not even kidding, man. Like it's, it's thanks a lot, man. Like they're well written, well thought out songs. I understand exactly what you meant now, like how you explain them. I get it, uh, but they're very memorable. Like they're, it's already ringing in my head. I put my freaking lighter on, man. I love. I thought like I was gonna die. <laughs> I was at the '80s concert. I was there. <laughs> that's the best. See, that's like when you write a song, write it so that people will break out the lighter. <laughs> write it that is larger than life. And then maybe someday you'll get to that point. Really looking forward to seeing you play live. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we'll have to grab a beer and uh, always have the story for after the show, what you've seen, yeah. <laughs> what I've seen on stage, and we'll recap. I'll be like, last night at the show. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Cool, so, yeah. boys. So... Andre Petipa from Andre Petipa and the Giants. Uh, we're going to post some links when I put the video up. Uh, I'm super proud to meet you, man. I'm super impressed with what you're doing. Really? Uh, Thank you really for getting you, me on here. Oh, listen. I wish you all the best. You know what I mean? And, and uh, we'll definitely have to have you back. Totally, man. Yeah. Anytime. And, just... uh, what we're going to do for our audience, you're not going to get to see it or hear it, but we're not going to go away. We're going to have a little conversation about stuff we can't talk about here for a second. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so thanks a lot, bud. I really appreciate Sweet. you coming on. Well, uh, whenever uh, whenever you guys release a show, just give me a heads up, and then we'll uh, coincide some socials with it. Absolutely. Peace out. Wicked, boys. Take, Take it care, easy. Man. All right. Bastard.